Watch out, the lefties are back. After struggling through the first half of the season with no wins, the Southpaws have shown they've got the touch when titles are on the line. Jason Couch's back-to-back -back wins have him dreaming of player of the year. Patrick Allen captured a title in Reno, but has lost a couch in L.A. as P.A. thinking of revenge. And let's not count out Hall of Famer Parker Ball III, who won 30 titles in his great career. Who can cool off these sizzling southpaws? How about the lone white hammer in today's show? Mike Edwards, it's all next. Turns to Thunder Bowl in Council Bluffs, Iowa, across the state line from Omaha, Nebraska. It's the 2007 Go RV Classic. Live coverage featuring five of the world's top bowlers gunning for the big prize money and a one-season exemption. Here are the five finalists. Mike Edwards goes for his first title since 94. Parker Bowl III has 30 career wins. Riga Kalfas from Northern Kentucky, a regional championship, earned him an exemption this year. Today he appears in his first ever TV show. The final two lefties are red hot in the second half. How about a combined eight shows and three wins for Jason Couch and Patrick Allen? Well, hello there, Bowling fans. Welcome to Western Iowa. Glad you could join us today. Dave Ryan, Randy Peters alongside. And Norm, we've got an incredible crowd here today. One of the best all year long and very enthusiastic. It's sold out. Randy, they're going to be assembled today to watch perhaps the three best lefties on tour. Parker Bowen III, Jason Couch, Patrick Allen, all trying to establish himself right now as the best left-hander. Well, not only the best left-hander, Dave, but I think the best player on tour, period. And nobody's had a better second half of the season than these two guys right here. Patrick Allen, one win shy of tying Jason Couch at two. And keep in mind, he is the tournament leader. He's in the most enviable spot of being the number one seed. But Norm... Who could forget the great battle just a month and a half ago when Couch beat Allen in Fountain Valley to capture his second consecutive Dick Weber Open? Yeah, that was a great match, and I think the start of a really good rivalry. Because both of these players are very vocal, and they like to intimidate their opponents. They are both egotistical, and to some degree, you have to be to play well on this level. But most importantly, they're really great bowlers, especially in the latter front frames with a title on the line. These guys are proven to be tough in the clutch. Normally, this is step ladder bowling today. Mike Edwards, the lone right-hander, takes on the Hall of Famer Parker Bowen III in the first match. The winner bowls lefty Riga Kalf is looking for his first career title. The survivor of that match bowls sizzling hot Jason Couch, who bids for his third win of the second half. That leads us to the top seed, Patrick Allen, who awaits all challengers in the finals. This week's chameleon pattern measures 39 feet in length. We have four left-handers and one right-hander. The lefties are going to be playing right around the first arrow. Jason Couch told me there was a free hook spot there. And Mike Edwards, our lone righty, well, he has multiple options. He can go straight from out. He said he even had a nice look from in and hooking it. But keep one thing in mind. Over the last two seasons, Patrick Allen has owned the chameleon pattern, winning the last three of four events held on this very pattern. And we are set to our being classic match number one. Edwards, Parker, Bowen the third head to head. We started with 64 bowlers rolling two seven game qualifying blocks in this format. Cut to the top 32. The top 32 rolled nine games, round robin match play, including a positioning round. Bonus pin were given for each win to the top 16. Nine more games. Total pinfall. Here we are, the final five. Mark Bowen leads us off. Good all 10 down. And this guy's had a pretty solid season. No wins to show for his five telecasts. But let's not forget about Parker Bone the third. And boy, we've seen this kind of form and result for a long time out here, haven't we, Norm? Yeah, that's his A game right there. Just piping it right up that first arrow on the left side. Well, it's been a while since Parker has won. 05 in El Paso. Here is Mike Edwards speaking a long time since he has been in the winner's circle. Big OU Sooner fan has a strike to start things out. He's our five seed. He's not won since 1994. And Norm, as we break down the Ace Hardware matchup, Edwards told us last night, yeah, it's been a long time. I'm the longest player right now on the exempt tour with the win in between titles 94, but 
I'm out here now to make shows have fun. Parker Bowman III thinking about Player of the Year still. Well, you know, as well he should be, but I tell you, Mike Edwards is better right now than he's been ever in his career. Kudos for him at 44 years old. Tulsa, Oklahoma he deals with a difficult split here. And Norm, your former roommate, you've known Mike a long time going back to your teenage days. Yes, I have. He's a lot of fun, too. The last time these two squared off was the Motor City Classic in Taylor, Michigan, earlier in the year where Tony Reyes won and pulled a perfect game. And Parker got the best of Mike Edwards that day. So Mike Edwards in El Paso a couple weeks back. Converts. That's a big one, Randy. A start today for Mike Edwards, who at times, we've seen him a lot on TV in the past few years, has an early open that really derails him. Well, no opens so far now. He made a great conversion there on the 4-9, sliding the 4 and the 9 perfectly. He doesn't want Parker to get off to too big a lead early on. All 10 down for the Hall of Famer from New Jersey. He's had a great year, five shows, as Randy talked about, but Norm, as he told us last night, you know, being a Hall of Famer in all those career TV appearances, he is fifth all-time and wins with his 30 titles. I'm never going to have a shot at player of the year unless I win. Today's the chance for Parker. Well, yeah, he has to win sooner or later. You don't win player of the year on the PBA Tour without titles. It's just not possible. There are three major titles coming up. I'm interested to see who can put their bid in those majors because those are the ones that are going to determine who wins player of the year. And Parker right now fourth ranked in the world rankings on the Denny's PBA Tour. He's brought home more than $57,000 in earnings and a 226 average. So he's right up there in all the major categories, but the victories have got to accompany his great season. Now here's a guy that didn't think he had a chance to make TV until position round match. Yeah, it was interesting. You know, the position round match, Mike Edwards is in seventh place, finishes with 257, and still didn't think he had a chance to make it. He looks up and Nathan Bohr has to strike in the 10 frame to make tel the telecast. He misses. Mike's on. Just like a big kid, he said. Yeah, he, he went in that position I imagine. Nathan Bohr made a great shot in the 10th frame, left the ring in 10, and that got Mike Edwards in. Sometimes you're back in, guys, right? And the total pinfall when you have bonus pins for victories. That was a positioning round match toward the end of this round robin match play format, leading us to step ladder bowling. Well, he's not going to back into this win with Parker Bone as lined up as he is. The first three shots have been absolutely perfect. Mike Edwards with a 4-9 and a flat 10 already. He's got to make those small moves to get the ball flush in the pocket, and that was not the right one. The last time we had four uh, left-handers and one right-hander was in Reno, and Brad Angelo was the lone right-hander. And he didn't make very well with that. And, and Brad struggled to try to create a shot and a look for himself. You know, many times that's the case. It looks like Mike is struggling with that right now. I'm sorry, it wasn't Reno. It was L.A. Las Vegas for Angelo. Oh, I'm sorry, Las yeah. Vegas for Angelo. And Brad struggled to try to create a good look for himself. And right now, early on, it looks like Mike's having the same problem. One guy that's not having a problem getting to the one-two pocket is this guy right here. See how he qualified and his match play record. A lot of bowling for these guys to get into the final five with total pinfall to get them this far. And a perfect shot in the one two pocket for the left handed legend. One of four lefties on our show today. Yeah, and all four of those shots looked identical in the way that they're carrying the pins. It's just they're, all the pins collapse around the ball, take some 10 in the pit. It's just perfect strikes. Taylor, Michigan, Chicago, Baltimore, Fountain Valley, now Omaha. As he calls for a re-rack. Parker Bone has made TV five times. That's tied for the tour best with Wes Malott. Wes has the one victory early this year. Using two different bowling balls. A little bit more aggressive bowling ball on the left lane. Deadly 7-10. Yeah, that would have been catastrophic for Parker Bone, allowing Mike Edwards to step up, throw a double, and get 34 pins back in two shots. 
But just this, just the ten pin. A lot of folks talked about solid eight, solid nine being the worst break. I, I still think it's the seven ten because that shot's good enough to strike. But instead, you, you don't even come away with a square. Yeah, you come one. away with an open play. Yeah, see, I made that one. Now Parker does convert the ten pin. Remember earlier this season, he missed a seven pin single pin conversion spare on television, and Parker told us didn't last miss a night, like I did last time. Yeah, that's right, Parker, like he did in his last show, and how upset he was. He said he was swelling up during the telecast, and he started sticking in his spare ball. He said, I don't have that problem today because I'll make sure that thumb hole's nice and large. That's got a hook. And it does nicely, recovers. Norm, you think Mike's playing a little bit more angle than he would like? Oh, I think so. Of course, I think Mike really likes to play that lay left where the ball just lays there in the pocket. So meaning that he would rather be further right going straighter? Absolutely. Getting the ball to hook up to the pocket earlier and just sitting down. Right now he's feathering it out past the five board and it has to recover the whole way on the way back. It's been a long time since this guy's won. And what that does, Randy, is you know, it forces him to feather all the shots outside of five. And in this one, it's closer to the second arrow. With the strength of that bowling ball, it's going to get high. And that's trouble for him. He made a ball change on that left lane. It still didn't pan out. So right now, Mike finds himself trailing. It's pretty good amount. 32 pins halfway through this match. 259 events between now and his last title. Mike Edwards trying to change that trend. Can he do it as a question against the legendary Parker Bowen III? Right now, he's in a 32-pin hole. Good. Oh, he left it open. Tough break. Well, he won't let that happen again. The Duke of Hazard, Norm, what do you think of that sign? That's beautiful. I love the hat. <laughs> hat and partner. Oh. Next week, we're headed to Parkersburg, <laughs> West Virginia. The Bear Classic is coming your way. Last season at Parkersburg, tour rookie Sean Rash became the first player ever to win a title after earning a spot in the tournament through the tour qualifying round. Rash has won twice this year. He'll be on hand to defend his title next week from Parkersburg, West Virginia. Wild and wonderful. We're headed there again this season, 12:30 Eastern. Norm, you got to wear that hat next week. <laughs> I have to find that hat. I haven't found a hat in my life that fit my head. Parker's got a big lead here, guys. Works on a spare. Six frame. He got away with one there. You know, you can tell right off his hand he didn't like it. Overhooks off the dry boards on the left side around 4-5. Almost leaves the 6-8 split. I'll tell you what, he keeps fooling around and lets Mike Edwards back in this. Mike figures something out. You never know. There's some time. Now, Randy, I'm interested about Parker. Perhaps thinking he had a little bit. Now, this guy has won 30 titles, great Hall of Famer, but he's going to be facing a lot of other lefties. Rhea Kalfas, uh, Patrick Allen, Jason Couch, all are southpaws. See the numbers with Parker and getting himself to TV, stepladder finals, but no titles. So is he experimenting a bit here? Absolutely not. First things first, you've got to win the match. <laughs> you don't experiment until the 10th frame, your fill shot, or if the 10th, 10th frame doesn't matter. Then you can go ahead and make a ball change or make an adjustment. But is, Norm, there some strategy for later on in the day in terms of where he's going right out of the puck? Well, not at this point. As Randy says, you know, you just get the job at hand done. Now, if drastic measures are, are required, of course you do a little experimentation, but I don't think drastic measures are the case for Parker Bone right now. Maybe so for Mike Edwards. I don't split for him. Yeah, and you got to laugh at that, uh, especially if yes. you're Mike Edwards. I mean, will not when do you ever leave two four nines in the same game on television? Yeah. In the same game, period. Much less television. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> when you're bowling a tournament, you got a lot of games to bowl, so your chances go up. But on television, one or two games, I mean, it's very unlikely. We do it again. No, we 
Clark this time on the four and leave two pins and open frame for Mike Edwards from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mike Edwards, part of the Flomax Weekly Update. Okay, maybe Parker's going to start experimenting now. 52nd last week after making TV a couple weeks back, guys, in El Paso, Texas, where Mika Cuevaniemi won his first title of the season. He bowled so well against Chris Barnes, and as we saw the great numbers thrown at him. <laughs> Lost in that semifinal. There's a nine pin for Mike Edwards. Nice. Yeah, I just don't like his reaction. I'm sure he doesn't either. Ball looks like it's hooking two or three times at the back end. Just looks like it's too strong down the lane. It is. It's too strong down the lane. And even when he does end up flush in the pocket, he looks at the solid nine, has yeah. to get lucky to get yep. that out even. Zone three head to head with Parker Bone the third on TV. <laughs> Don Finn lost the 1990 Don Carter Classic Finals to Parker. Early. His last yeah. championship, guys, 94 IOF Foresters Bowling for Miracles Open in Ontario, Canada. April 16th, 1994, over Pete Weber in the final, 203-192. He's done so well to make TV three times this year, but will succumb here to Parker Ball the third in the first stepladder match of our show. Yeah, and this is best case scenario for Parker Bone. You know, he's made five telecasts this year, so he is very comfortable on television. But the first game, you kind of like to get loose, get comfortable. And that allows you the ability to run the table, so to speak. Four wins in a row. And that's what he gets to do here. A little victory lap against Mike Edwards early. Beautiful performance. Just it's stood the test of time. I mean, you know, for 20 some odd years out here, this game has looked the same. Yes, poetry. And here's a guy that if you watch this motion, you can pretty much figure out why at age 45, he's still extremely competitive. Just a beautiful game. Not a lot of moving parts, short backswing. Unfortunately for Mike today, bad ball reaction and not very, and his carry is about as equally as bad. But as Mike told us last night, life is great. He's relaxed, just trying to make shows at this point of his career. He was engaged to Sam Mulligan, sales manager of the PBA. They have a house together in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And he says life is so great for him off the lanes. The rest is just icing on the cake. We are fast tracking because the match is over. Parker Ball III has wrapped it up. So they'll go as quickly as they can here for our ESPN cameras to try to advance through this so we can get to the next match on time. Yeah, in this format, we have an extra game, so oh, if it ends early, Jesus, let's get him out of there. We will take on, in the second match, the third seed, Riga Kalfas. And guys, what a story he is green getting here. from just outside Cincinnati, northern Kentucky, making his first ever TV show today. Riga, regional champion, one of six regional winners last year in their points titles, respectively, on the regional tour, Randy, which is kind of like the minor leagues of the PBA to try to earn an exemption. He's done it. We have back-to-back regional winners. John May last week All way, Taylor Wolf. in Irving, Texas. Right. As we fast-track through this match, it has been wrapped up by Parker Bone III. So another regional winner, this time Riga Kalfas, will try his best against the legend Parker Bone III. His first ever TV match is against the Hall of Famer. And Norm, that's no fun, right? No, it's not. But I tell you what, Early in, uh, in, in our matches, you didn't see very many of the regional qualifiers make it to television. And here we have two weeks in a row where they make it. This is interesting now. Three to go, Parker, that's correct. He advances with a convincing win over Mike Edwards, 267-191. Now the three seed, Riga Kalpas, making his first ever TV appearance, awaits the Hall of Famer, Parker Bone the third. Much more action from Council Bluffs next. In the 2003-04 season opener, Robert Smith won an event in this very bowling center. Last year, it was Mike Machuga making some headlines from Erie, Pennsylvania. He hit the lanes with one goal in mind, his first career title, and if he got it, a special trick for the fans. It was unforgettable. I have watched that show over and over with friends, with family, by myself, and I can remember fantasizing about winning before and, and I always thought I'd be jumping around and hooting and hollering, high-fiving everybody and just excited and that 
that feeling when they all fell over, it was more of a relief. My body went completely up. I could not get excited. It just, there was nothing left in me. It was over. It was my trophy. It was time to celebrate. I have been wanting to do that for so, so long. And, uh, you know, everybody's known I've done it in pro -ams. I've done it uh, in many, many countries to kind of celebrate the end of something. Well, once the, once the flop was, was for real and it was the real celebration, that's when it was kind of set aside for celebration. Uh, I'm just fortunate to be the one that took it to ESPN. What a moment, the Atonic Edge and the Machuga flop from last year. How far down lane did he go? Looked like it was about 20 feet, Norm. <laughs> well, I know he passed the arrows. You know, the ball landed just the side of the arrows, but after it was over, he was past them. That was incredible. All right, next match here, guys. Parker Bowman third. Trying to climb the ladder. Boys, a split has a six pin here for his spare to begin a match with Riga Kalfas. I thought Parker made a very interesting comment last night because obviously when you have four lefties and one righty on a show that there's going to be a lot of discussion about lefty righty and norm we've been a part of that for the 25 plus years that we've been on tour but parker had something very interesting to say he said you know randy four lefties make the show everybody's up in arms but when the high left-hander finishes 37th nobody mentions that and i thought that was thought that was a pretty good point on parker's behalf well he's right i mean there's no doubt about it that he's right. All right, guys, here's the moment. Riga Kalfas makes his TV debut right here from Florence, Kentucky, just outside Cincinnati. The lefty. And his first TV shot is a seven pin. His first TV shot was pretty solid. Riga Kalfas, just one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, a great family man. His, his whole idea about coming out on, from the regional tour and out here on the on the tour full time was he was only going to do it if he could bring his family. Include he, his family, that's he right. He wanted to have his family intact. Intact when they came out here. He wanted everybody to be together, so they pack up the RV and took the big tour. Our show is here. Tyler and Amanda leading us to the Ace Hardware matchup. So Riga Kalfas, a guy who won the Central Region title, Randy, by 30,000 points, clinching a berth in the exempt tour. The emotions, all the hard work of going to the small towns, driving everywhere for the events. It's not the big leagues. It's like the minor league of the PBA. Well, I tried that motorhome stuff for a while, and <laughs> it's not good when it's about 18 degrees out. But you know what? He says he loves the family time. And he wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. And right there, two shots in a row to start this match from Riga. Yeah. About as good as you can throw for your first time on television. Well, no doubt. You know, we watch it just about every week. Guys have to get settled down and things. And, and this is his first championship round appearance and the first two shots were just pure he told us right before the match didn't sleep much last night didn't sleep much the night before <laughs> he's riga was nervous against parker ball the third he's lined up and the one thing that you have to watch for now is with all the left handers that we have four lefties left there's going to be a lot of traffic on that side of the lane and that's something that the left handers are not used to just because of the fact that there's not as many left-handers as right-handers. Once they find a pretty good shot or a pretty good reaction, they kind of stay in one spot because they don't have to move all over. But today, these left-handers will be making a lot of adjustments, and the one that makes the right adjustment the fastest will win this tournament. Yeah! Gets a late hit on number seven. Parker hoping to dedicate a win today to his daughter, Sydney, just turned one this week. Happy birthday going out to her. Dustin and Brandon watching the show today, too, as young sons. Yeah, when you talk about adjustments, Randy, for the two, they're going to have to make them, but it's important that they make them incrementally so that they can continue strings. It's not enough for them to get three or four in a row and then get a six pin. That's That's down. Down. Here we go. They have to make those adjustments incrementally so that the strings are intact. Otherwise, they just don't get to compound the numbers well enough. I agree with you, Norm, but... Dave, I'd like to get back to Sydney and, and her birthday. How much cake do you think she had? Quite a bit. Yeah. Hey, your first birthday, I, re I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like that one-year-old birthday 
party. Guys, we're all parents. We know that. <laughs> Most of it ends up either on the floor or on the kids' faces. Yeah. Not actually. On the head. Being consumed. <laughs> Here's Riga, who's been a truck driver much of his professional life. A little lazy on the ball, way down the lane. He's expecting this ball to just tear out right about here. Just keep driving through the pins, but it doesn't. Labors just a little bit. That's the soft seven pin. Now, this is his first ever Denny's PBA Tour TV appearance, but locally on WLWT, WCPO in Cincinnati, he made several appearances on uh -oh. King of the Hill type show and unfortunately misses the seven there. He told us he's been on up to 40 TV shows locally in Cincy, but didn't win them by missing shots like that. We had an approach problem here. He looked like it looks like he slipped, and and sometimes for a first timer on television, overcoming something like this is pretty tough. Parker trying to capitalize on Gimme. Doors open off the open frame from Riga Kalfas there. Yeah, this is basically the same shot as Riga. You know, and any time I watch the lefties and I start seeing them leave week sevens, I think of one thing and one thing only, Jason Couch. Because Jason Couch doesn't leave week sevens. No. No. When the lanes start to break down, the front part of the lane starts to dry up, that forces the players to move towards the center part of the lane to try to find some fresh oil to get their ball to, to skid down to that break point yeah. easier. And when, when they have to start creating angle, I once again think of Jason Couch. Yes, because they have to have more hook on the back end to absorb that angle they've created, and Jason has enough hand to do so. He liked it. Gets a late tap on number seven again. A strike for Parker Bowen the third. Speaking of Jason Couch, he is the number two seed. He awaits the winner of this match. Yeah, when a player says that's much better and it takes this long to snap that seven pin out, that's not a good sign, Randy. That means his ball's laboring just as Riga Kalfas' ball did. These are the adjustments that the players are going to have to make in order to continue strings. There's a strike for Riga. 56 career events. This is his first TV show. And those local events, he had not been on TV since 1997. Here are the regional winners we told you about. John May, the South region champ, did make the show last week in Irving, Texas, and made the final loss to Chris Barnes. Yeah, that's our region, so we get to see John May a lot. Jeff Carter, my buddy from the Midwest, Marv Sargent, friend of mine that I grew up with as a junior bowler way back when, and five-time PBA titleist Chris Warren. Squeaks. Squeaks. Hey, man. This is the second year of the regional winners earning their exemption. That's a good one. Get there. You liked it. Seven pin for Riga Kalfas. Last year, the central region winner was Jack Jurek. Jack is exempt this year as well. Riga wins the yeah, this was a title last year. Two years ago for Jack Jurek. This is a great shot, too. You know, we're talking about those changes that happen on the left with the traffic. This is oil carry down. You get more oil travels to the back. It's harder to get the ball to drive the pins. When it's not driving the pins, you're going to shoot a lot of nine counts and oftentimes even seven tens. There is a seven pin and the emphatic fist pump for celebration. Well, Riga Kopp is making his TV debut against the Hall of Famer, Parker Bowl the third. He's down by 12 pins right now. Midway through match number two, it's Steph Ladder Bowling. The winner takes on the two seed, Jason Couch. All trying to get to the number one seed today, the left-hander, Patrick Allen. PA is number one this week. There's Gary LaBella, Vice President, PR and Advertising, Go RVing. Very glad to have Go RVing, our title sponsor for the event here in Council Bluffs, Iowa, and one of our major sponsors for the rest of this 06 07 season. We're on the road with Go RVing and the Denny's PBA Tour. How about the Bear Classic next week, 12 30 Eastern Time, Parkersburg, West Virginia? We're heading where it's wild and it's wonderful in the Mountain State. As Sean Rash tries to defend his title, what an event that was last year. Very exciting finish for the former weak shocker from Wichita State. Then note the special start time. Brunswick's own Carolier. It's the U.S. Open second of our four majors this year, 12 Eastern. You see the pro times on the 25th and 26th at Brunswick, Brunswick's own Carolier, not far from New York City, and the Rutgers University campus in Jersey. That's all coming up. Speaking of Jersey, from Jackson.
the Garden State, Parker Bone the third. Nice segue, brother. Nice segue. Why, well, thank you. <laughs> Strike for Parker. Yeah, that looked like it might have been just a little more speed. Three feet another one. For Parker, a little more direct. He really liked this one as soon as he let go of it. Parker also the four seed. The last show, step ladder format for Valley, Valley California. Gets some help on the six pin. He was unable to win there. Jason Couch took the title and defended his championship in SoCal that day. Well, for every week seven or ring and seven, sometimes you get one back, and Parker Bone the third just got one back right here with a trip six. So Riga Kalfas in a huge hole here, seventh frame. Mentioned that Riga, much of his professional life, a truck driver, has a lot of experience with the mechanics. As Randy pointed out, driving an RV with his family motorhome cross country. He told us last night, Randy, some of the experiences have been <laughs> pretty interesting with the kids fighting over what TV show they're going to watch, what CD goes in the player. And, but he said the family time has been fabulous. Yeah, it's close quarters for that family right there, but... I'll tell you what, that's it's a wonderful thing. I, I did it with my family, and it's great to it's a great way to keep the family together. And Riga said, yeah, it's a little bit like the movie RV with Robin Williams, and all except for the exploding toilet part. Oh, this is way wide. Look out, there's a split. That was Tyler Riga's son holding Justin, one of Parker Bowen III's sons, on the set. So it's a family situation here. There, there is a hook spot at about four or five, but if you get it on the other side of that, it's not going to hook back from there. So, Riga, bad shot. Now he's going to have to get the ball to the right side of the three pin, drive it over into the seven. Down at 32 pins down, you better drive it into the seven. He will not, and leaves the open frame, which will pretty much do him in here against Parker Bond the third. I thought, guys, it was an amazing story that Riga told us last night, we told you about the motorhome, and Randy, you guys have traveled with motorhomes before. There are a lot of mechanical problems that take place with these huge machines, especially in the wintertime. They've had some electrical issues. You see Parker with a huge lead here. And Riga's motorhome, which is Parker, just outside the bowling center here, he got some gloves. So Riga's first thought when he made the show, his first in his career the other day was, because of had electrical issues, he had an appointment very early in the morning tomorrow in Elkhart, Indiana, well, now, Parker's made a ball change here. Now I'm going to miss that appointment at Elkhart. <laughs> the motorhome, and, and Parker knows, too, he's got one as well. Motorhome life in the PBA Tour, it's no easy matter. Get yeah, this is just a reconnaissance mission here with Parker. You know, he's going to go and grab a couple of balls, going to try more tools and try to find the one that consistently slaps a seven pin out of the rack. There's a seven. So the noticeable oh, ball change here, a little experimentation, as Norm pointed out. And Parker, again, nice to have the luxury of a big lead here, Norm, to make that ball change. You know, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And when you have the luxury of, of getting to just throw anything you want, and as you say, experiment, you, know, you don't have a lot of things in your mind. Well, what if, what if? You know the what ifs already. As you see, Riga's. Wally, 6 10 on the right lane. So Parker has advanced, Norm. That means Jason Couch, along with Patrick Allen, they're warming up in the practice lanes outside the TV set. Jason has been sizzling hot, as has Patrick Allen. I mean, eight shows combined for these guys in the second half, and maybe a fourth title. After not winning any titles in the first half and making appearances for either on television. Well, they'll both agree that the left side has been better the second half of the season, but Jason Couch has dominated. I mean, I think he led every tournament, but or every game this week, but two games. He led the tournament in L.A. I mean, he won back-to-back. -back. The guy's just been a monster. And you want to talk about power, this guy doesn't leave anything in the bag, even though he's been trying to go straighter. I mean, listen... It's hard for a big power player like that to, to throw the ball as straight as you can up five north, so he's got to figure out a way to go straight when he needs to, and he's figured that out. Yeah, he does that with a lot of weaker equipment. 
We are fast tracking here, fellas, because the match has been clinched by Parker Bowen the third. Jason Couch will take on Parker next as the two seed. Not too bad for me. He heads to the I'm arena yeah. to go for another title this year. And as Jason told us, with a win here, good performance in the majors. He's got a great shot of player of the year. It's something he's never won before. And as Jason said, the ultimate goal. He would achieve everything he's wanted to in bowling if he can make that happen this year. Thanks, everybody. Rika finishing great, too. Snaps at seven each time. First time on television. I think it's a big success for Riga. I know he didn't win. You always want to win. You at least want to win a match. Get more than one game on television. But to go away with some experience, it's excellent. Got to get that RV fixed tomorrow, but he'll do it a little happier after a TV appearance. Riga Kalfas, great week for him. Jason Couch has been absolutely on fire. Can he continue his excellence? Yeah! He takes on Parker next. Yeah! Yeah! Gorbian Classic step, ladder bracket. Here it is. Mike Edwards fought at Parker Ball the third first match. Parker continued his excellence against Riga Kalpas in match two. He's making his TV debut today. Now it's Jason Couch, the number two seed, and arguably the hottest bowler on tour against Patrick Allen, who's been also red hot in the second half of the year. Just across the Missouri River from Omaha, Nebraska. During Council Bluffs for a second straight year at Thunder Bowl. Eighth time PBA Tour has been to the state of Iowa. Merrill Anthony won the first event here. Hawkeye State Classic. Quad Cities Open back in 1975. Wife Kim is here to watch Jason Couch. Number seven, how about that? He's an animal. Go down. That seven pin just got sucked off the deck. I don't even think the four pin hits it. Yeah, it's just long. kind of the vortex just kind of pulled it off the deck. Blowing through pins, just blasting it apart there on the deck. A lot of emotion for Jason Couch. We know the number one seed has struggled because you don't have a lot of adrenaline momentum flowing when you get there. Whereas the two seed, he's got it already. And Parker's lined up here, Norm, as well. We could have a great match. Yeah, he is. You know, you have one guy that really likes to be vocal and another guy who just likes to strike and run his opponents over. This is going to be fun. You mean I'm going to roll a three pin now? That's what you do, right? It wouldn't surprise me. When I get old, I'll get all the breaks. This is the ninth time these two former roommates have squared off with Parker Bone the third getting the best of couch, leading six to t six and two, six wins, two losses. And don't think Jason Couch doesn't know that number. There's a seven pin. They are three and two in finals. Parker Bone the third has the edge there. The last Fountain Valley last year won by Jason Couch. Yeah, this is so close to what Jason did in the first frame, but with that little extra pop on the back end, Jason gets to pull fourth pin into the seven. Not so for Parker Bone, he has to shoot the spare. Leading us right into the ace hardware matchup. These two lefties trying to establish himself as the best left-hander, perhaps, as you said, top of the broadcast, the best player on tour today. Well, Parker's been great for so long, like we mentioned earlier. 30 titles. Jason Couch, back-to-back -back wins this season. And I know that Jason is trying to make a statement. He wants player of the year. Parker's lived through that. He's a former player of the year. But, you know, there's still a fire burning inside Jason, or, uh, Parker Bone, and he would like to win Player of the Year just as much as this guy right here. Eight pin for Couch. That's the break I'm talking about. Well, that's a bad break, and we saw Mike Edwards do this on the right side of the lane in the first match, and this is just bowling ball going right past that pin. That's just a lot of power, a lot of revolutions. Yeah, he's talking about the wrong type of break there. You know, I'd be talking about the good ones like that one in the first frame before that solid eight for the left-hander. It's just, it is a bad break. Well, the spare here, they'll still be even in this match early on. The two former roommates, power versus finesse. Eight 
pin goes down. Great look from our crew behind the pin deck. Now, Randy Norman, I want your take on the second half of the year this guy has had. It's just been incredible. Four shows, two wins. He's now second ranked on tour. He's in the top five in money as well. He's got four top tens in a row. He's just been sizzling hot. Yeah, with the formats the way they are, it's difficult to put together a run like he has. Uh, you know, Tommy Jones did it a couple of years ago. Walter Ray probably more often than most. But here's Jason Couch on a roll. Yeah, it's been a pretty strong start of the second half for this guy. He, you know, he had the great month of January. Followed it up with some good weeks where he qualified, you know, right up at the top, but then lost first round of match play. And you're right, because of the format, you know, you can catch the wrong guy at the wrong time. But I can't remember the last time a guy's been as hot as Jason has in the last month and a half to two months. Here it comes across the deck. Yeah, it taps the seven, but it will stand. Very good year for Parker, too. Another left-hander having a lot of success in the second half. Five TV shows. Best for him in some time. Yeah, and what I see here is on the right lane in the first frame, Parker Bones' ball hooks a little bit early and had to hold flush pocket. Kind of lucky that it did so. He looks like he made a little incremental adjustment. Now the ball doesn't get the seven pin out. That's not good for him. So Randy, Parker's had a nice season. Best since 0102 when he made nine shows and was player of the year. He's right up there with a couple wins. Yeah, it, it, a very quiet year, but a, a great year. I mean, the only reason why most people don't know about it is because he hasn't won yet. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. There's a break, and Jason knows it. That's not going to sit well the way Jason sees it. But look at him. He goes, it never fails. I bought this guy. He's the luckiest guy on the planet. Just a little cave in bucket action for the great one, Parker Bone the third. I like the right move. Pit 60 feet to success there for Couch as he you blasts guys through. You wonder why drives me nuts. Okay. <laughs> That's like brother and sister down there. You know, they've roomed together early on in the career, or Jason's, for a long time. So, Norm, you saw the number there bottom of the screen a moment ago about the first half, second half success for Jason Couch. Jason has told us that he told his wife Kim in the off time between first and second half of the year that he's going to come back with a better mental approach, be a lot more confident. is one thing. He told us last night, Randy, too, that he's done a lot of homework, more so than he's done before, researching oil patterns and really thinking about his ball selection and layout for his particular tournaments. Well, he knows what it, you know, what's being, what's, what it takes to be successful on the left side, and quite frankly, you got to go straighter, and he knows that. So he's working on trying to get straighter and straighter. Again, it's difficult. He's got a very steep swing. It's difficult for Jason the way his game is is structured to go that straight. But you know what? At least he's not sitting back going, well, I'll just wait for the lanes to come to me. He's doing yeah, something about it. He's working at it. And you're right. He's doing his homework and trying to figure out the best way to play each batter. But right now what he needs to figure out is how to carry the solid eight pins on the left lane. Yeah, just awesome shots there to look at the eight pin. Just very hard to overcome that. all 10 down in a big spot. Especially, we have got a great match brewing here. Especially when your opponent is tripping three pins forward and you're leaving solid eights. That just, it's just hard to overcome, right? That, yeah, that doesn't sit well either. That gets a little frustrating. But he does think, and this is fact, Jason thinks that Parker is the luckiest player ever. Yes, <laughs> he certainly does. Now, of course, we know that's not true, but Jason thinks so. But when you're good, you're always lucky. But when you're good and lucky, that's tough to beat. 
He is fifth all time. Danny's PBA Tour history and titles. He's got 30 of those. Jason Couch has 15. One of these two advances to the final to take on Patrick Allen, the number one seed. Which one will it be? Who will the Lord of Lefties be in this match? Sold out house, SRO today here in Council Bluff style. A long line of fans waiting to get in about an hour before our telecast today. And we'll check with the Denny's PBA Tour money leaders, Doug Kent. By his win at the Masters, 100,000 to begin the year. Still has the lead. Walter Williams Jr. won a lot in Japan and has been very consistent. There is Jason Couch. Randy, what a charge for Couch and Allen in the second half of the year. I mean, it really is history making what they've been able to do in the last several weeks. Dur doing well on the money list, and they're also uh, second on the point list is Jason and fifth for Patrick Allen, respectively. And both Jason and Patrick like to shop at Ned Flanders Left Orium. That's right, Dave. They have left-handed scissors, left-handed coffee mugs, left-handed everything. I'm Ned, Ooh, Ned, Ned Flanders. Is there a website? You know what? I'll, I'll check that out. I'll get you the directions. Would you mind? All right, actually, it's a fictitious shop oh, from uh, The Simpsons. But Jason Couch, big fan of The Simpsons, but not a big fan of this. Now, he's going to need that left-handed spare ball for this one. Spare ball's not going to win against, Jason, uh, against Parker Bone when he's lined up. Six pin for Couch. And a very close match. Briar Bowling. These world-class athletes got this far by the total pinfall for the best five bowlers to make our show. Head to PBA.com, learn more about the new junior membership program being offered by the PBA. Junior bowlers 17 and under who join the program will be eligible for equipment discounts, exclusive PBA email news bulletins, monthly tips from a Denny's PBA Tour Pro, and much more. Annual membership fee, only $25, and application forms are available at PBA.com. So log on and sign up today. Couch again. Oh, 10 down, a big shot. Good move. For Jason Couch, made the right move. Yeah, you, you heard him say, come on, make the right move. Remember, we talked about all of the left-handed traffic, and this is going to come down to adjustments, making adjustments and making them at the right time. Almost, Norm, in a way, anticipating the lanes changing and making the adjustment before you go higher, before you get that bad split. Exactly. We call that making the move in front of it. Has done it. Yes, he has. And the, the telltale sign is if uh, for a right hander, your ball is migrating up to the four pin area, and you make the move, and you were behind it. But if you can sit there and just go throw time after time, high flush, then you know that the player is making the move before the four pin, and for left handers, the six. Yeah, we don't have any more righties, Norm, so we're going to have to turn everything around. Yes, but that six mirror, band, seven mirror band. image is tough for me. It is for me. Big event here for Parker, guys. Last eight TV shows, 11 total matches. He's over trying to win a title. Been a long time for him. El Paso 05, his last win, and perhaps his worst shot of the day out of the pocket. Parker baby split here. And just like we mentioned, this lane all of a sudden right here broke down and hooks right in front of Parker Bone. That ball hooked right at his shoelaces, and that makes the ball go high. So either Parker didn't anticipate it coming, or he made a bad shot. What do you think, Miller? Well, it's possible that he made the move, but right into Jason tra uh, Couch's track. Now, typically, Jason will always be playing the lanes to the right of Parker Bone. And a lot of times, when you migrate right in your adjustment, you run right into the track of the other player, and it double hits. Takes care of the 2 7 split nicely. But the door opens a bit here for Couch, eighth frame. Right Jason Couch can now strike out and win this. Shoot 248, the best Parker Bone can do. 247. He's been so clutch, Randy, when he's needed it the most in the second half. Can he do it again? The right move. Wow, what happened? That ball never hooked down the lane is what happened, and Norm talked about earlier. The carry down, the oil moving down the lane. Jason made a move. He didn't want to go high again, and his tendency is to get fast, and it looked like he got fast and made the adjustment in, and the ball never gripped the lane. 379 here, double wood. For Jason Couch, split numbers for him this week at 50%. Now, the double wood's not the problem here. It's that one 
lone soldier on the left side. <sighs> Probably the second hardest spare to make, period, is the 3-7-9 for the left-hander. Just missed that seven pin. So the deficit balloons down to 31 pins for Couch in big trouble. An open frame this late usually spells the end. Yeah, his only chance is striking out and then look for a little love from Parker Bone. Yeah, you see, he got the same exact response on that left lane that Parker Bone did. Didn't get near that response on the right end, Randy, or he probably gets get, keeps the string up on the left lane before the high hit. Yeah, this looks like Parker Bone's shot that just hooks early and goes high. And so right now, the, the lanes are going through transition. The left-handers are experiencing a little bit of what the righties go through. And it's all about adjustments. Again, they've got to make the right move at the right time. So much of it is anticipation. Tough weekend here for Couch Guys, the beloved Florida Gator basketball team, ranked number one, lost yesterday, 17-game win streak to Vanderbilt. Although Jason said, I want to see them lose before the SEC or the NCAAs, obviously, which would end their season. He took it hard nonetheless. And this one he'll think about for a while. He doesn't cover there. Another open wow. frame. And he's about done for. Wow. Dispatch all but over. Parker Bone looking to go up the ladder. He'll take on Patrick Allen in the title match. Quest for a third title of the season with a new couch at least for one more week. He's never done that in his career. He's won two titles in a year five times. And this one's over. And again, Parker Bone gets the luxury of picking up any ball he wants. Experiment a little bit. Third straight time, Norm. Trying to get locked in on the left lane now because you know he's having a problem on it. Move a little bit to the right on it. Change balls. That looks pretty good. Another option, Randy. So get his speed lot. down a little bit to move in to get the ball to go around it a little bit earlier. more, a little bit more hook yeah. for for Parker. And you're right, it's a nice luxury to have. He's going to dial in which which bowling balls to use and how to play the lanes. And the number one seed, Patrick Allen, will now take on Parker Bone the third. He has done quite a bit of bowling against some great legends. An all-time Denny's PBA Tour history greats. The last several weeks, we'll talk about that when he hits the lanes against Parker in the final. We are fast-tracking because this is over. Does he bowl against Hall of Famers every time he makes a telecast, Patrick Allen? And usually he beats them. If you look at the recent numbers, he's had a lot of success, including defeating Walter A. Williams Jr. did Patrick Allen the finals in Reno to begin the second half of our year. He has returned to his player of the year form of two seasons back. There's still another shot here for Parker, so it's not quite over. He's had three resounding wins here today and a chance to throw a different ball or two, experiment with his look to the one-two pocket. As this one wraps up. He's KO'd three opponents. How about one more? And it's the top seed, Patrick Allen. Along with Jason Couch in the second half has been absolutely on fire. Maybe Parker Bowman third can take care of another. It's red out lefty. Parker looks for his first title of the year. Patrick Allen, his second in the second half of the season. Here's Ted Bear, co-proprietor of Thunder Bowl here in Council Bluffs, Iowa, near Omaha. Actually received the commissioner's exemption this year at the event. He's been a PBA member himself since 2000. Good to see Ted again this season. Bear Classic coming away next Sunday from the Mountain State, Parkersburg, West Virginia, 12.30 Eastern time. Sean Rash tried to defend his title. What an exciting match that was. Last year converted a couple of 2.10 splits, did the fabulous then rookie on the PBA Tour. Well, we love Randy, too. Thank you. Hold me. Randy, are you too emotional to give us the guy oh, championship I'll recap? Do it. I'll do it. <laughs> okay. It's all about Parker. Match number one, Parker Bone the third. Defeated Mike Edwards by the score of 267 to 191. Edwards, the lone righty, one and done. Match number two, Parker then took on Riga Kalfas. 
He beat Riga by the score, 235 to 205. Parker continues up the ladder. Match number three, Parker riding the gravy train with biscuit wheels, defeated Park, or defeated Jason Couch by the score, 245 to 193. Setting up a great championship match for the 2007 Go RVing Classic. Norm is here, both on signs and in person. <laughs> and Parker Bow III is here as well. He's shown up, hasn't he? What a day for him. He takes on Patrick Allen. The finals are next. Set for the championship match, Garvin Classic Thunderbolt, Council Bluffs, Iowa, across the river from Omaha, Nebraska. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, Norm Duke, our entire crew, live coverage of the Denny's PBA Tour. Glad you could join us today from Council Bluffs, the top seed. Patrick Allen set to take on Parker Bone the third in the final. Parker trying to climb the ladder. Can he go all the way is the question. See what this ball change looks like. All 10 down. A little bit weaker, less change of direction down the lane, allows Parker Bone to do what he likes to do, and that's to go straight and real direct with a lot of speed. Yeah, and he's got a lively one in the back end now because of that retention of energy that the weaker ball will give him. Nothing like the step ladder format, guys. So all the way up he goes. Saw so Parker's numbers. And just outside Tampa, Florida, here's Patrick Callan, originally from Terrytown, New York, near the city. Double wood for him to start. Norm, you've led a lot of tournaments in your career. Why don't you talk about how difficult it is being the number one seed through a stepladder format, sitting on the bench watching all this action, and then coming in and trying to win one game. Well, you don't feel like it's, it's, you're getting a fair shape because the other guy is more comfortable than you are. And that has happened in each match. But the guy who comes out of the bottom four always is more comfortable. 3-9 goes down for Patrick Allen. A nine-match losing streak, Randy. As we check with the Ace Hardware matchup for the top seeds ended when Jason Couch took care of Patrick Allen in the finals. This year, the Dick Weber Open in Fountain Valley, California, in Orange County. So can the top seed do it again? Well, the one thing that Patrick has going for him in his favor is he loves this pattern. As you see, Patrick making a ball change here. I don't know if he's sure about how he wants to play the pattern, but he loves this pattern. He's won three of the last four times on the Chameleon pattern, so that should give him more confidence. But a week seven works. You know, as the leader, I always said, let me be even after two frames, and then I feel like I have as much chance or more than anyone. But it's so hard to get off two frames and be even. Fourth show of the year for Patrick, all in the second half, after he made a, an equipment change, went to a different ball manufacturer. Hey, right. There's the seven pin. And if you want to know why, Patrick Allen is so good on this chameleon pattern or try to figure out a way to kind of mimic Patrick and his style, join a PBA Experience League and bowl on that same chameleon pattern as a left-hander. You can get a pretty good idea of what it takes to, to throw a lot of strikes on that pattern, get close to what Patrick Allen's trying to do or what Patrick Allen does. And right, and on the chameleon pattern, the most versatile player will do good, and I think Patrick Allen is one of the most versatile left-handers on our tour today. It all happens on the PBA Tour experience. Oh, way high, guys, on that shot. 2-4-7 up. Yeah, it looks like the right lane has caught the left lane with regard to that hook spot right there. You can see the ball just firing off of it, going high. Kind of lucky, only leave the 2-4-7. Parker Bone, an excellent spare shooter, and as I said, Patrick Allen is sitting here now. He's only one pin down. I feel like that he should feel like he has the advantage at this stage. Well, I wonder why Parker went to the weaker ball in the left lane, but he didn't use it on the right lane, and that last shot went through the nose. Well, because he was leaving, he was leaving the 3-8. 
in the in the ninth frame of the game before he was kept leaving the 380 wasn't uh, wasn't getting his ball all the way to the pocket seven again for Parker so I lost that head-to-head -head match in the positioning round match up toward the very end of round robin match play leading into the step ladder TV finals here they've never matched up on TV though first time today there's the seven both bowlers struggling a bit to find that pocket because of all of the traffic from the practice in between matches, the practice that happened before we went on the air, all of the bowling balls going down the left side of the lane, the oil pattern is completely caved in. The front part Great of the lane ball. is dried up. Oil has moved down the lane. These players have to make the proper adjustments and figure it out. And then, like we talked about before, anticipate changes and make the move before it happens. Ten down for Patrick Allen. Over the past three seasons, the top seed has won three times in the step ladder format. We talked about the incredible struggles for the top seeds. Patrick does not struggle on TV, that's for sure. Great winning percentage, top ten all time. And Norbert's hard to believe that all three of those top seed wins have been against Patrick Allen. <laughs> been against Patrick, <laughs> I know. It's just amazing. Guys, I got a feeling that this match, even though the scores were... were fairly high, uh, especially for the left-handers this week. I've got a feeling that this is going to be more of a chess match. This isn't going to be a free-for-all. Let's see how many strikes you can throw. I think the lanes are going to remain unsettled. The players are going to have to think their way through it. And whoever avoids the trouble shot, the shot that goes high and does not split, that'll be your winner. That's got to do something. Yes, it does, Patrick. Knock them all down. So on that note, last couple of years, the top seed has really struggled. Patrick Allen from Wesley Chapel, Florida, near Tampa, wants to change all that and win another title. It would be his second, the second half of this season. For the final, on the way from Council Bluffs. Welcome back, everyone. Garvey Classic, Council Bluffs, Iowa. That is the step ladder bracket. Parker Ball third, trying to run the table here. He knocked off Mike Edwards, Riga Kalpas. Jason Couch, the only one still standing, is the top seed. It's Patrick Allen. All right now, Parker. Bits for his 31st career title, first of this season. Hall of Famer down 10 pins. Works on a spare. And a big strike. Yeah, he still hasn't changed balls in that left lane, but as you can see, he does move a little bit to the left, and he just amps the speed up, keeps the ball on line by ball speed. I'm sorry, that would be the right lane. It's all right, 101st career TV appearance norm today for this great left-hander. There's an eight pin. Seen a few of those. I don't need remnants of Jason right now. <laughs> <laughs> Seen a few of those today. And he's not hooking it on this lane and Still leaves the solid eight. Let's see the ball go right by it again. Oh, yeah. Oh! Whoa! Oh this is the eight. Oh, I can't believe he gets lackadaisical in a title match. Uh, already spotting uh, Patrick Allen the double. Could have brought it to even. He leaves the solid eight and then just gets lackadaisical, whips it on the left side, right. and Patrick Allen is licking his lips. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Door is wide open now for Patrick Allen. Looks for the turkey here, fifth frame. Chance to blow this one open right here. Seven. That's just huge, especially because of the fact that not only did Parker not strike in the fifth frame for a double, he opened. Patrick Allen does what all great champions do. I've seen you do it a lot, Norm. They get up and they take full advantage of that. And that strike there just gave Patrick Allen the three bagger. Those top seed utility started this year, guys. 
Alteré won his 42nd title to set the record against top seed Pete Weber in Japan, Doug Kent over Jack Turek at the Masters, Tony Reyes over Wes Malott, Taylor, Michigan. West defeated Chris Barnes in Chicago. Come on, man. Come Norm, on. you knocked off Ryan Schaefer on Long Island for your second title of the year. Finally, Couch broke the trend in Fountain Valley. Now Patrick Allen trying to continue it here. Top seed excellence. Way high. Yeah, and that was a good shot. I tell you what, right Going off his feet. hand, he liked this. It just over hooked on that dry spot that these left-handers have created down lane, right yep. about here. Yep. And he pays full penalty. Yep. That lane is not. Four, six, eight, ten. Not an easy shot here, Randy. Well, he threw it really hard over at the uh, the four eight and hopes something comes out and gets lucky and kicks out the six ten. It's kind of like shooting the Greek church without the seven pin. Seen it made before. Oh, it's got a chance. Oh, and he only got one. That's a big mistake. Sure was. Just a seven pin count there really can hurt. Got one on that. One. You on a turkey? One really turned around. One. In my opinion, big mistake. He loses a lot of pins in count. And, but he gave it a shot, man. He went for it. He says, hey, it's a title match. Right. His lead went from 32. 12, 20 pins in one frame. Parker take advantage. Big strike. It looks like the enigma now, Dave, is the left lane and Norm, what adjustments need to be made on the left lane? Well, I think right now speed rules because even though these guys can move to the right, you know, migrate toward the oil, as soon as they use that track that they've built, the ball's still gonna overhook. So I think right now you have to slam everything shut and go as straight as you can with a little bit of speed and then hope you can get some power into the pins. Just like that. Parker Bones bringing it back to two pin deficit. And only a Hall of Famer rebounds like that. He misses the single pin spare and then he comes back with a double. Awfully big double for Parker Bone the third. Randy put it out. It was a 32 pin deficit a second ago, and the match was nearly over. Now just two pins separate these two great lefties. Parker's pumped. Come on. Nice shot. Yeah, let's see what happens on the left lane now. I think there's going to be a lot of indecision for PA on this left good. lane, and, and there can't be in order for him right to now. make really a successful shot. Right, he sure would like to finish on that right lane. Jesus. Four shows in six weeks. Second half for Patrick Allen. Reno a win. Fountain Valley lost in the finals. El Paso lost in the semis. And now here in Council Bluffs. But to really take off and think about player of the year again, got to win today. A lot of pressure. Stay behind one. Big strike. Dwoods.com. Yeah, that was a key strike for Patrick Galley. You know, when he stepped up there on the left lane, he had given one of the greatest of all time new life. He couldn't feel too good about that, but that double right there sure changes it. And it keeps Parker from being able to shut him out. Patrick Allen can strike out and shoot 239, the best Parker Bone can do, 237. Trying to repeat your feet, Norm, of Long Island to wrap up the first half of our year. Climb the ladder. A split. Yeah, Parker just loves this off his hand, too. Overhook on the left track again. See, and I thought he used too much of the dry on this shot, which made the ball go high. Well, I agree with you, but when you slam everything shut and you're going more direct, it's important to keep your eyes to the right for a left-hander so that if you, as he shoots his spare and misses both of them, so that if you miss to the left into that track, most of the time you'll miss it with no hand in it. And then it becomes your friend. But as soon as you get that ball out there into that track area with full hand, it's gonna overhook at this stage. What a wild topsy-turvy match this has been. Patrick Allen had a strong hold. Seven-pin count. 
Parker Bowen got right back in it, and it opened again for Parker there, all 10 down for the Hall of Fame lefty. He is again in a difficult spot with the late open. Yeah, 201 is his highest conceivable score. And PA needs just good count and clean Come on. frames, ninth One and time. tenth, and he's going to win. I'll take it. Yeah, right now he's at two, 209 pace. He's going to take a shot clock violation right here. He says, you Let's know go. what? Come on. I'll pay right the now. fine. I don't care about anything but taking my time. Right now, man. Right now. Patrick Allen, and the lead expands again for him. Yeah! Yeah, baby, yeah! Made the right adjustments. Good he shot. made the right adjustments late in good the match. Shot. Overcame a big split. And right now, good good shot. eight total pins away from winning this tournament. Yeah, in two shots. I like his chances. Enough, Bob. Enough. More than enough, I think. He has done it. His ninth career Denny's PBA Tour title comes today here in Council Bluffs, Iowa. And with his second win in the second half of the year, he overtakes, at least for the moment, Jason Couch as the hot player and hot left-hander on tour. Really an interesting player of the year race shaping up with three majors yet to go to wrap up our year. U.S. Open, the first of the three, we'll have four in two weeks. Hey, the right. Well, noon Eastern on ESPN from New Jersey. Hey, man, man. Hey, breaks, man. No, Patrick no, no, no. Allen. Another title. And the top seed, Randy, suddenly has won two in a row after a nine-match losing streak. Well, he got tired of uh, letting the top seeds beat up on him, so he said, well, you know what? I'm in the top, I'm the top seed this week. One time, Take a little Omaha. revenge out on him. said when he earned the top seed that it was time for a little payback for the number one seed to continue success. And that's exactly what happened today. Patrick Allen, for the ninth time in his career, can raise the trophy. He takes over Parker Bowen the third in the final. Parker attempting to climb the step ladder, couldn't quite do it, falls short. Couple in there. Wow. Next week. We head to Parkersburg, West Virginia, 12:30 Eastern Time. The Bear Classic. Sean Rash trying to defend his title. Patrick Allen has done it. Second win of the second half of the year. He is red hot. Now for the entire crew: Randy Peterson, Norm Duke, Dave Ryan, saying so long. It's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. PA all the way today. He wins in Council Bluffs, Iowa. What's he thinking about? Player of the Year with three majors still to come. More bowling next.